Well, you know, in this day and age of uh, high-speed internet, you know, you got YouTube, you got streaming video, Skype calls, all this stuff. If you wanted to learn guitar on your own, well, you know, it can work for a lot of people. See, depending upon where you live, how much money maybe you have to invest in guitar lessons, and you know, how much of a disciplined learner you are, going forward and studying guitar on your own, maybe online, you know, however you do it, but doing it without a teacher, can be, some, for some people, a very effective way of learning. So. On this edition of the Guitar Blog Insider, we're going to discuss four steps to learning guitar without a teacher. In 95% of the cases, you know, getting personal face-to-face one-on-one guitar lessons with somebody is really the best way to go for anyone who's really serious and wants to learn guitar, you know, at a, at a good level. Now, the only problem is that, you know, if you perhaps live in a small town or something, a rural area where there are no teachers for you, or maybe, you know, if you simply can't afford to pay for private classes, and it's not cheap to take lessons, you know, or you can't make the weekly set time commitment involved with taking lessons, you know, that can be a problem for someone. I've had students try it who, let's say, are pilots or something, and, you know, if you're working for a major airline and you're a pilot, that's going to be really hard to meet up with your instructor weekly, you know, for an appointment time. As things get in the way, and the same goes for, you know, uh, responders like police, fire, maybe even nurses, doctors. It can be pretty tough, uh, depending on the kind of schedule you have, to be able to make a weekly appointment time. Now, any one of these issues I'm discussing here can cause a problem and even though the real-time feedback that happens with a personal one-on-one teacher can't really be beat, uh, the bottom line is that when you take private lessons you are going to be set into that schedule and have a commitment of your weekly time and your money to both pay for the fees and of course to be there at set times you know ready to go. We know the first step to learning guitar on your own without a teacher is to realize that even the most self-disciplined people will lack in certain practice habits. And the biggest dilemma will often come from what perhaps we could just call scattered practice, or scattered learning or random learning. This is when we set out to do something related to our guitar studies, something we want to learn, but instead we get lost in scattered material across the internet that doesn't really directly relate to where we need to go. You know, the internet offers an unbelievable amount of free lessons. However, the problem generally is the material is not only really random in its nature and sometimes full of a lot of misinformation on topics, but it generally creates many more questions for the student than it will answer for them. So, uh, you know, as you kind of hop around from one free lesson to the next, you start to experience gaps in what you're learning. And, you know, what happens is your fingers can't keep up from one idea to the next because the material is kind of out of order and how you should be learning it. And this is why you need to establish a system, base your system upon some kind of schedule to follow and then follow that schedule on a daily basis uh, going through week by week. You want to focus on material that relates well to your level of skill and what you want to learn and then build on that plan. Uh, this kind of approach, you know, it's going to start to create some good results for you, but you may need to also touch base with a teacher once in a while, maybe once every three months or something like that. So that that you understand how to stay on track and as well you know, follow the plan into a further direction for yourself. You know, when I was studying at the Musicians Institute, the guitar classes they were running that covered technique and uh, fretboard agility drills, that kind of stuff, it was one of the most popular classes for attendance. They usually held it in a fairly large room. Dozens and dozens of the GIT students attended those sessions. It was a chance, you know, to learn all types of great drills and exercises for developing your technique from some pretty amazing players of all styles of music. And, you know, it taught me a valuable lesson about developing a solid left and right hand coordination level and that lesson was for how learning the guitar wasn't just finger activity it was also a lot to do with brain activity you know you need to be clear-headed you need to be focused on what your hands are doing how you're gripping the neck how you're feeling the connection of every hand motion because all this stuff plays a role with the way that our mind processes mon muscle memory information and this is why a solid method for drilling on guitar technique every day has to be there even if it's just for a few minutes or so it's very valuable and it's something that's often overlooked with players who are studying on their own without a teacher 
You know, another area that's very important to the self-taught student is being highly aware of what you know and very careful to not dwell too much on information that you've already achieved a level of success with. There's no point, in other words, of playing a song for 10, 15, 20 minutes, you know, that you've gone and mastered months and months ago, you know, and, and then maybe justifying that to yourself that doing that kind of playing on that tune was actual valid practice time. Uh, you know, doing that type of guitar playing, it really isn't, you know, valid practice. It's more playing for fun and it does almost next to nothing for your skill development. So instead, work on songs and licks and riffs and guitar parts that make you stumble on the instrument. You need to be focusing on that kind of work where you can't do it you know you just set out to play the line and it falls apart and you do it again and you and you do it and do it until you can actually pull it off and it's clean and it's working properly whether that's a technique related idea maybe something directed more at specific styles of music or you know whatever it is that it's that kind of work it's the work that makes you stumble on the instrument so in order for you know serious skill development to occur in your study sessions as a musician you want to work on musical ideas that you have uh, in, a, in your practice routine that can't be the ones that your mind and your fingers can predict. Uh, it should be ideas that stretch both your guitar technique and your muscle memory. You do that kind of work and you know it doesn't matter if you have a teacher or not, you're going to be progressing on this instrument. Well, the final idea that I have for you involves setting up a place in your home that will be your, you know, always ready to go and easily accessible practice session area. Now, the main thing here is that you need an area that has to be set up and quick and easy to go for practicing in. That's a big factor because if you have to spend some time, you know, let's say you have to spend five minutes turning on some equipment or maybe rolling some equipment in the room, you know, getting a chair moved into a room or unpacking your guitar from out of a case or out of the closet and setting everything up, getting a music stand, you know, it's going to be almost feeling like a chore. It's going to be feeling like it's a bigger endeavor than it really needs to be. And it's going to hold you back from practicing. So you want to make sure that you can set up a guitar practice area that's dedicated and it's a dedicated place with everything ready to go. Have your guitar on a guitar stand out in the open or get one of those guitar wall hanger things and hang the guitar on the wall in the room. Have everything set up ready to go very quickly. You know, have your music stand in there sitting there, even keep your songs on it, you know, when you're not working and have everything up and ready to get going with in a few seconds of sitting down. That way, you'll feel like jamming, you know, on the guitar and studying guitar it will seem fun and easy, quick to do. And you'll want to do it more often. And when you have a few minutes, you can, you know, shoot over to the room and start playing a lot more guitar. Anyway, thanks for watching. This is the end of the video. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts on all this in the comments section below. Thanks for your time and we'll catch up again next week on my other channel for another episode of the Guitar Blog Insider. Hello, I'm Andrew Watson, the founder of Creative Guitar Studio. Creative Guitar is a professional guitar school that I established 25 years ago after I graduated from Hollywood, California's Musicians Institute. After building a successful local school, I decided to branch out to having online courses as well. So back in 2008, I decided to take Creative Guitar onto the internet and offer my guitar methods through both YouTube and on my website. Since then, I've had over 157,000 guitar players from over 100 countries take part in my online courses and the courses have only become better with the material having grown so much over the years. Creative Guitar's curriculum has become one of the best ways available for guitar players to reach their playing goals. So click on the Join Now button below and sign up for your free membership. That free membership will allow you to view all the free members area videos, download certain handouts, watch samples of each course, and also purchase products from the online store. From there, you can take things a step further by signing up for either a basic or a premium membership package for as little as $14.95 a month. So click on the Join Now button and start taking advantage of everything the website has to offer.